me tell you about a thing or two I could have been just as good as you So I should thank my dear old dad For fucking up my head so bad Savage Girl Yeah, I'm late and smoking cigarettes Savage Girl And I can smell the bourbon on his breath Savage Girl He was a drunk and a fucking fiend Savage Girl He used to beat the shit out of me With my finger on the trigger Drowning in a bottle of What's happening, patrons and everyone else who supports the show? Um, super excited. Uh, got a little special treat today. We got a good friend of ours um, coming on, and we're going to talk a little bit about um, a band that he has resurrected and a new video that he has out. So uh, get your shoes and socks on. It's happening. I um, want to thank everybody who supports the show and all the Facebook pages and and all the people on uh, on Patreon, all the patrons on Patreon. Uh, if you're watching this and you're not on Patreon, feel free to to join join the pack, so to speak. Um, let's get right down to it. Um, let me introduce to you um, a friend of ours. He's an American musician and comic book creator. He's the founding member, one of the founding members of the band Life of Agony. Um, and his work on graphic novels, uh, Wire Hangers, Crawl to Me, and Kill Killogy, as well as his horror-themed adult coloring book series, The Beauty of Horror. Here today to talk about his band that he fronts, Spoiler NYC, and break down their new video, Damaged Goods. Please welcome our old friend, Mr. Alan Robert. Hey, man. Yo. How you doing? Yo. How are you, buddy? <laughs> Good yeah. to see you. Good to see you. Back, back in the States, huh? Yeah, we just got back. I'm still jet lagged from uh, three and a half weeks of Europe, 
uh, playing those massive open air festivals with Life. I Dragon. saw, man. I saw you played some bangers, man. Like I, I saw a couple of them that were massive. Yeah, it was great, but super hot, man. It was like yeah. some days were like 107 degrees on stage. Uh, our drummer had a, a rough time one show, and we, I we had saw to, that Ver Veronica. Um, did she faint, or she just had heat exhaustion? She had heat exhaustion, kind of. Uh, really wasn't feeling well after one of the gigs and we had to cancel England. Um, but we'll be back, uh, in 2023. For was sure. that one show or a couple yeah. shows? Yeah, it was one show. Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, what did I see? Bloodstock? Did you play that? What, did, did, what, 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 what was it? I saw a real big one you played like, whoa. Well, we played the Wacken. That's it. Wack. I'm sorry. That's it. Wacken. Yeah. We played Wacken in Germany. Um, we played the Alcatraz Festival in Belgium. Um, we kind of we kind of uh, did a lot of summer touring, and we broke it up in July. We all uh, kind of did our own thing in July. I went out to San Diego Comic Con and did that sure. whole thing. Sure. Um, <clears throat> but June and August were pretty action packed um, with shows. So we did Hellfest in France on the first leg, yeah. uh, which was uh, amazing too. Um, and we played some shows with uh, Doggy Dog, some club shows with Doggy Dog yeah. that were a lot of fun. Yeah. And um, bringing it, yeah, bringing man. it back, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's that's cool. You you know, is it? Um, it must be great to get get out there on the big stage again. I mean, it's been a couple years, right? I mean, yeah, this is the first time since the yeah. pandemic and everything that yeah. we we got a chance to really get back out there. So. It seems like everybody's everyone's jockeying for position right now, like out there. Everyone's like everyone's trying to, you know, is out there now trying to make a run at it. It's like there's a real glut of music right now of, of bands and um, for not being able to see anything. I think everybody's kind of like the starting gate opened and everyone is making a run for it. You know, I'll tell you, we came this close to not being able to rent a vehicle or rent backline yeah. because they're all booked up and everyone's out at the same time, you know, it's, yeah. uh, it's just like, and, you know, thank, thank God, um, the airline didn't lose any guitars or anything. Cause I, yeah, I heard yeah. nightmare stories from other bands that were yeah, flying over the that. same time. So <laughs> thank God we, we're okay. But, um, yeah, uh, it was, it was awesome. Awesome summer. Good, good. I, and just before we, before we, we, we get down to brass tacks, so to speak, is are there any LOA? I, I looked. I didn't see anything booked. Are you guys taking a breather? Uh, we're going to announce something soon. Okay. And then uh, next Fair year, <laughs> next year is um, we'll do something um, by the end of the year. But next year is a big year for us because River Runs Red turns thirty. Wow. Uh, so expect us to be out and about. Right. Wow. That's great. That's yeah. great. Um, let's talk a little bit about this project of yours, uh, Spoiler NYC. My experience with Spoiler NYC is, you know, um, and I told you this a while ago, I love the record that you put out. I really enjoyed it. And uh, you guys kind of bubbled up uh, years ago, put the record out, um, and then kind of took a breather. And, you know, fill us in. Why is Spoiler coming back and what's going on? Well, we started the project back in 2006, 2007. A good friend of mine passed away uh, from leukemia. And I started writing songs uh, just to try and, uh, in a cathartic way, to express myself with that loss. Mm -hmm. And um, the songs that were coming out didn't sound like LOA. And they went back to my punk rock roots and um, with a couple of great friends. You know, I know Chris, a guitar player, since LOA's very first show. Uh, he yeah. was in a band. He was in a Jersey band called Cryptic Cookies for Jesus, and uh, <laughs> he ended up being my bass tech for many, many years. He went out in the very first LOA tours in the band with us, and kind of grew up with us. And um, and that was the cool thing about Spoiler was that I was able to kind of do that band on the road with LOA and have Spoiler open up and do double duty because basically the and, band and what, was all. What year was this? This was, this was like 2007, 2008, yeah, I okay. guess. Uh -huh. And so uh, we got to do a lot of cool stuff. 
you know, because the, the band was basically teching for LOA. Uh, right. and, and the band's a three piece. So it's like it's like it's not high maintenance. Right. Yeah. It's very easy. Very easy <laughs> and very fun. That's what I always loved about it. You know, yeah. it was like no expectations. Sure. Um, and uh, just pure fun for the love of the music. Yeah. Um, and it, it's a it's a, written in a style that some of my favorite bands uh you know misfits and social d and rancid uh there's some you know th th those are the exact influences i hear I, I i hear through it and these are bands that i love i feel the social distortion the misfits you know like co it comes right through it and, and you you wear it on your sleeve uh uh you know with this band um did you guys um in two th did you guys other than uh, did you play out a lot other than like on uh, those shows with opening for LOA, did you get out and do like other stuff? We never did like a full blown tour or anything, but yeah. we would play around the East coast, you know? Okay. We were like the dingbats band, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, we would do, um, trash bar. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. We did a couple of CMJ marathons and things yeah. like that. That's you know. good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it must be, it must be, uh, it's not right. You're playing bass and you're singing, you know? So it's a little bit, is it i know i is it a different um do you approach it differently than life of agony like when you have a show is is it a whole is it like i gotta sing tonight is it like is it is the approach different or is it let's just go no do it it's it, it's pure pure fun pure yeah good let's let's go have a great time together we laugh <laughs> a lot you know right uh like i said there's no expectation so there's there's not a lot of pressure you know yeah. uh um it's just uh it's its own animal in a way uh and and that's why it you know me and chris uh lost touch over the years he had a lot of trouble uh he went down a certain path uh he went in you know he got locked up for a while um uh, but i think sometime almost a year ago to the day um right around my birthday i guess we reconnected and uh made amends and um good and since since then we've spoken every day you know there's a lot and, of that uh, going around these days yeah and uh, it's been great you know it's been great to have him back in my life and um and um and to kind of resurrect this this whole idea uh you know we had recorded those two songs a while ago with ken lewis the, these two new uh spoiler tracks that never now, were released so the two new spoiler the two new tracks are, are damaged goods which is the video we're going to watch and banned for 38 states right yeah Ban banned in 38 states yeah and so these two tracks are being added to uh grease fire and hell's kitchen and it's a new release called banned in 38 states correct yeah and the whole thing's completely remastered uh yeah. by joey z from life for agony nice uh, it sounds great nice and big and thick and i, su and, uh, I assume he did it in his through the nest right he did it in the nest yeah, yeah long island that's right good good can't beat it <laughs> boy it must be nice having a, a a band made with a nice studio right it's a beautiful thing yeah no joey's and, the best and uh yeah, it's good and, you know he, he always helps us out when he can yeah um joey actually you know back when he had method of group studio in brooklyn before it got got killed by uh, Hurricane Sandy. Um, he recorded two of the tracks on Grease Fire. He did uh, Suicide Hotel and I, I want to say Liar Cheater. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If the um, it's coming out on vinyl as well, of course, as on, on streaming platforms, but if somebody wanted to pick it, pick it up, uh, the best place to reach out and get it would be www.spoilernyc.com, right? Yeah, that and has links links out to everything. Looks like a green vinyl, is that right? <laughs> yeah, it's actually transparent green. It's really cool. Nice. There's a, there's that one. We did uh, transparent green and also purple. Nice. Yeah. So it's never been released. That Grease Fire record was never released on vinyl at all. No, I remember I had a CD. Yeah. Back in when, those I, when, when people use them other than coasters. 
those were during the CD days, right? Yeah. Although, you know, once we announced this, you know, people were hitting me up like, are you going to release it on CD? I'm like, who's listening to CDs anymore? Yeah. Me and my car. <laughs> my car doesn't even have a CD player. Yeah. I me wish it my, did. Me and my 97 Lexus, you know? <laughs> so, yeah. That, that's So let's, um, let's set the table a little bit for for this and and let's let's watch it this is the the damaged goods music video and uh let, let's watch it and we'll stop and we'll, we played it at the beginning of the show you know let, let's uh let's break it down a little bit um yeah let's uh let's just roll it and uh let me see hold on hold on let me seem to have lost it let me find it again Ooh, here we go. Let me tell you about a thing or two. I could have been just as good as you. So I should thank my dear old dad. So, who directed this? Uh, Derek Soto. Derek you know Soto. Derek? Do, have you? And what's the? You, do you have a background with him? Have you worked with him before? I don't. You know, he um, he did some videos for Dead Crew. And, oh, okay. And I really liked the way they came out, and um, and Jerry X hooked me up with him, and um. Yeah, we just hit it off right away. And it, it was supposed to be just one video at first. And and um, and we had like delusions of grandeur that we were gonna knock this one video out in a weekend. And it turned into two videos in like a month. <laughs> and uh, I felt like I was, you know, going back to Brooklyn every day. Uh, to ah, good job. old, good old music videos. <laughs> I remember them well. Yeah, we're gonna do yeah. two in a weekend. <laughs> yeah. I got a bridge to sell you in fucking Brooklyn. Man. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, you know. But uh, he was really patient with us, and uh, and accommodated all my stupid, crazy ideas. So, um, God bless him. There, there. This is this a sound? Is is this a sound stage with a psych? Where was this? Yeah, this was a spot in Brooklyn that had you know one of those endless white rooms. Yeah, psych, um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I had some colors that you could flash uh, sure. onto it. You remember the name of the place? Was it a, a film stage? It was a whole building filled with them, actually. Uh, it sounds like Broadway stage or some Broadway studios or something. Yeah, I forget the name. Yeah. I used to be a stage, ma I used to be a stage manager on a, on a stage like this. I just remember yeah. it smelled like paint because they just had painted yeah. it all white. Sure. Yeah. That's... When I was a stage manager, you know, I many, many music videos and many projects come through and they come and they paint the they paint it and then you gotta paint it back and 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 the whole bit, you know. Did a lot of did a lot of music videos in in in, in you know the two I was a stage manager on two stages, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. It was um, a cool day because uh I brought my daughter, my 14-year-old daughter to the set. Nice. She helped she helped out for the first time, you know. Cool. Uh and uh it, it was a fun day yeah yeah it is filmmaking is fun okay I like to zoom in on Travis Bickle on the shirt <laughs> and the zoom out in your Travis Bickle. We, we, we got, we, it's some def, definitely making films here, man. This is cool. <laughs> We're trying, man, on a shoestring budget, man. Good, man. Nah, listen, bro, we love it. Um, what brought the Travis Bickle character into it? Uh, like, how did, how did Travis get in the mix? You know, the lyrics always reminded me of Taxi Driver. Sure. Uh, there's a lot there's a lot of similar themes of kind of uh someone who's overlooked uh someone who's struggling within their own life that is trying to uh 
uh, kind of be a hero in their world. Um, and it always reminded me, especially the line, um, uh, finger on the trigger. I always pictured Travis like that, sure. you know? Um, so yeah, that reminded me. And I remember, I remember the moment, uh, that I thought of it and I called Chris and I was like, what do you think about this idea? It could be a total disaster or it could be amazing. And he was like, yeah, let's do it. And, um, you know, it was, you know, looking on the internet for all the, you know, all the Travis did, things, you know. Did you did you rewatch Taxi Driver? Many times. But, you know, I always, part of my thing, like drawing the horror coloring books. And yeah. Stuff, instead of like listening to music for hours and hours, I listened to like DVD commentaries from like Scorsese or Coppola. Sure. And that's what kind of gets me in the zone. So I'm yeah. always listening to like Scorsese talk about Taxi Driver or De Niro or whatever. Uh, so it's part so of my thing. I, th I think we spoke about this uh, when, when you when you were on the show proper. When you're drawing and and and, and when you're doing, uh, you know, uh, one of the coloring books or something, you basically have something in the background. You're sort of listening, like sort of, yeah, yeah. And I love all the all the nitty gritty details of filmmaking, and sure. it's always something me that uh, yeah. that's inspired me. You know. Love, love, I love listening to the, the, the commentaries on, on some of the films that I've seen many, many times and getting like, you know, a new insight into things, you know, from like, you know, a Coppola or, uh, you know, or, or something that, yeah. So, so yeah, but yeah. Taxi, Taxi Diver is a, a really brutal film, man. It's really, it really is. Yeah. yeah and, if, you know, we, we, we've been um, watching me and my gal a lot of, 70s films we've been sort of we, we that's like our thing now you know like fucking 70s films taking a pelham one two three dog day afternoon you know uh yeah. french, Ford, connection, Ford Apache. french connection you know and we've been watching a lot of these and some of them like these 70s films in new york are just so graphic graphic violent and racist you know <laughs> they really it's, are yeah. wow yeah. yeah they got away with a lot of stuff they like did they, they, they really did. But Taxi Driver is is, uh, is is a pretty brutal film, but it's 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 great. It's it's uh, it put, it really puts it puts it out there. There's a lot of there's a lot of great um, roles in there. Peter Boyle's great in it as Wizard. You know, there's yeah. there's, there's great stuff and and, and Jodie Foster's great and, and of course Harvey Car Harvey Keitel as Sport. <laughs> you know, so, yeah yeah, yeah he, he, he's great. So he, let, let's keep moving. I got to ask, so where did the Marathon Cab come from? I, I know, I think there's one on the street in New York. Um, how did you get the cab? So my cousin is a prop master for the film industry and and he pulled a couple of strings for me to get it. And, and the guy, which was super cool, they let me drive it, you know, which is not something they usually do. Sure. Um, especially at night in, in yeah. Brooklyn. <laughs> we shot it in Brooklyn. Uh, was it easy to drive? It was, but I was so scared I was going <laughs> to fuck yeah. it up, you know. Yeah. Uh, it's got everything is authentic. So Is it, does uh, it have the jump seats in the back and stuff? um yeah i mean it's a, it's a standard 74 checker yeah. cab you know yeah. so we shot some of the scenes in the back seat too yeah um i really wanted to have one shot where you see travis pickle in the seat and me as myself in the back seat in one in one shot and uh you know we wanted to release this at a certain time and and we didn't get to do that visual effect but that was maybe at a later date we'll squeeze yeah. it in <laughs> All right. I was too young to put up a fight. So when they creep into my sister's room, and there was nothing that I could do. Damage I know she's worse off than me. Damage the shell of what she used to be. Yeah, I could see how this would have taken a couple a, a couple of outings to get done. Between yeah. you know, between the shots of you in the back, the shots of you guys in the studio, the shots of the car coming through the street. I mean, these are all these are all all in themselves, you know, this doesn't, shit doesn't get done in an hour. 
plus we did a we rented a little theater uh to get that theater shot okay so that's in there too yeah we really tried to recreate i'm sorry go ahead we really tried to recreate some of the iconic shots of taxi driver okay let's see You know, I got to say, it, it's a good sound and track, man. You know, uh, production wise, you. you know, it, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a damn good sound and track, you know? Thanks, man. I'm just so used to hearing just wah, wah, wah. You know, it's like, <laughs> Jesus Christ, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. What a shake, he was damaged good. People say I will never amount to nothing. Ah, there's the theater, huh? <laughs> yeah, man. What, 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 let me see if I recognize. Is that that place out in Brooklyn? That little, that little private yeah. theater in Brooklyn? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we were looking for the red seats, man. It was hard to get the red seats. Oh, you were specifically looking for the red seats? Yeah, like we were looking at the Nighthawk Theater. Oh yeah, um, that's, yeah. Good luck. And they, they had black seats. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So you know, a lot of thought went into all this stuff yeah right down yeah. to the the king kong cab company patch on on the jacket <laughs> you know o o you know authenticity goes you know it goes a long way hey, oh, what a shame. What damage goods. You had to get into the Travis character, the 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 um the army jacket. Did you have to go out and get an army jacket? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Was that was that and difficult? Like that sort of style he well, wears? It, it had to be that jacket, you know. Yeah, like that's the, not something I see too often anymore. Very specific field jacket. Yeah, you know, from yeah. Uh, from that era. So yeah, we that's all to the T and. Yeah, and this and the bloody scene we did right in Derek's apartment. <laughs> we put the blood right on the wall. Woods. Damage woods. <laughs> put the blood all over the walls. Nice. Yeah, it was awesome. Yeah, and like you said, to me, getting this shot and doing it right, that's that's a night right there. You know what I mean? I mean, that's not Absolutely. something you do in fifteen yeah, minutes. Yeah. You know what it takes to do that. I know right? what it takes, bro. At this point, not only do I know what it takes, but I add something onto that now. I've learned, I call it the chaos factor. Whenever somebody mm -hmm. like tries to do, I say, listen, there's, there's what you think it's going to be. And then you have to add in the chaos factor, which is, right. you know, and like, that's how I operate now. I, I just like, whatever, however long you think it's going to take, it's going to take that much more after that too. So just relax, you know? Yeah, people, yeah. you know, when people try to, no, we can do it in an hour. I'm like, Get the fuck <laughs> out of here, please. Damage goods. I love that shot. You come in and, and toss the dough in. You know, <laughs> that's great. Let me see. It, where, where, where? Is is that when it, that when you walk up to the window? Was that did you shoot all that in Brooklyn? Yeah, that's in Brooklyn too. Yeah, yeah we uh, we had the, the cab for only two two hours on a weeknight, so it was like two hours? get it done. Yeah, it was like get it done, man. It was like we really planned. You had everything. it for two hours. Yeah, yeah. Holy shit! Which means basically you you had to right away get you had to get the camera in there, light it, get you in there, drive around, do three takes. And then probably the last 15 minutes was let's get a couple shots of the cab driving by the camera. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. That <laughs> opening shot, right? 
Um, yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, and getting yelled at by, you know, the local stores and stuff, you know. Yeah. You know, getting in people's way. Did you have, um, like, these shots, did you have a photographer there to, to, to snap some of these? Separate photographer to, to document it? Yeah, Derek's girl, uh, Marissa. She's fantastic yeah, good, good, photographer. Good, good call, man, you know. Yeah. These, these, I saw a couple of the shots. They're really nice, you know. Yeah, really crisp. I like that. I, I, even down to the airborne, the airborne patch, right? Everything, man. It had yeah. to be legit. Yeah, even the uh, even the sunglasses. Those are, are those are those known as aviator glasses? What are, are those? Yeah, they're a certain kind of flight a pilot. Yeah, uh, right. Yeah, so they they're like a square shape as opposed to like Top Gun or something. You know uh, that that's uh that's great the hardest um, part was the mohawk because you know i got nothing up top so yeah the, the mohawk <laughs> was uh, <laughs> i hear you <laughs> the mohawk was like I, but, the first couple of mohawk tests were way too like uh clubber lang you know like this, <laughs> this, this, this tall. i'll send right. you some pictures of that it was that's funny, funny. But, uh, yeah was like, it was a little it was this. a little too clubber lang for, for, what, for what we were going for you know? <laughs> You know, it's it's a lot easier to get a ball cap with the strip, yeah, already baked into the rubber. You know, yeah, right. But, it, but if, if but if you have a bald head, it's hard yeah. to get a mohawk. You know, so it's <laughs> like, how do we do this? The clever um, way, yeah. You know, also we have this. You know, I'm really super excited and really happy that you guys are a part of this. Uh, we're doing our holiday, our annual holiday show. And, uh, you know, you guys are on the bill and it, it, it's a free all ages um, matinee a block away from CBGB's. We've been doing them for a while. This is the holiday slam uh with uh, faded line, serial po poets featuring Stephen Messina, concrete ties, voice of doom, Dija, uh, you guys and our friends sworn enemy. This is going to be the holiday shows are always great, and and uh, I'm really excited you guys are a part of it. Oh, we're super psyched to do it, and this will be the first show in so many years. You know, it's probably over a decade that we haven't played. Uh, so we're we're getting back in the rehearsal room just for you, Drew. Cool. I I I, I appreciate it, and we'll make it super like fun and comfortable for you guys. It's 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 what we do. Are you are you guys gonna be beyond, beyond this? Are you guys gonna go out and do anything else? Or are you just gonna see how it kind of what comes down the line? Well, we have another video that's going to come out around the time of, uh, see, the vinyl uh, is starting to pre-order now. It comes out Halloween. Right. Um, and so we're going to drop another video right before that comes out. And, and um, that would that be the video for Band in 38 States? Yeah, and that was a lot of fun. We, um, we shot that at the Lucky 13 Saloon. Oh, there you go. Jeff, Jeff's uh, place. Yeah, and and uh, we had a great time there. We invited fans to come out and be in it with us, and um, mm -hmm. and my dad plays a cop, arrest me, and everything. Oh boy, uh, yeah. So we made him an I IMDb page and everything. So he's he's on cloud nine right now. That's great. Good, good. <laughs> uh, for those out there, there it is. Spoiler NYC banned in thirty eight states. You can pick it up at www.spoilernyc.com. And of course, I'm assuming. You know, it's going to be we're going to we're going to hear it on on the usual suspects uh, streaming stuff, you know, Spotify and, and and all that, you know. Yeah, it'll be everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I saw this. Is this freaky? Yeah, man, that was kind of <laughs> trippy. trippy, man. Kind of kind of is, man. Yeah, it's a, it's an honor. It really is an honor. You know, you know, I, I, I didn't know this until fairly recently, you know, because, you know, fairly recently, you know, since the pandemic, you know, I did the real deep dive, you know, uh, into LOA and came and saw you guys play live and, and had you guys on the show and, and really did my homework. And man, one thing, one thing that is was very apparent early on is you guys have some really, um, some fans that are just really intense and really, really love the band, man. Like really, really uh, passionate, passionate. Oh man, fans. yeah. What do they call really themselves is. again? There's a whole. There's, what's that crew here? There's the front like, rail crew. The front, front row rail. crew. 
that's what it front is. Rail. Front, front rail. Front rail crew. That yeah. that those people are passionate. Yeah, yeah. They and they're, they're very uh, supportive of all the things that we do outside of LOA also. And yeah. um, you know, Mina's painting nonstop and right. Um, the spoiler project, Joey's studio, all the yep. stuff. You know, they're very supportive of of us as people and and um even uh i did like a fundraiser for a bunch of charities uh a couple months back and they all came out to support it bought raffle tickets and everything it meant, it meant a lot it meant a lot and awesome. um and uh it, it really is a community um that we've built over all this time it's amazing community and culture man i mean that's that's what this uh the tie, the tie that binds us together, music, right? And and we're fortunate that whether it's sort of the hardcore thing or or, or the elo, you know, these, you know, it's it it pull it brings us together and it creates these bonds. Music, music is like that, man. Yeah, it really it's, is, especially when it comes from a real place, you know. Yeah, yeah, a, a, absolutely. Uh, as we're heading as we're heading uh, towards the door, what's happening with um, what's happening with uh, the books or are you working on something new or uh what's happening yeah like i said uh in july i was out at san diego comic-con and i signed a new deal uh with idw publishing to uh release beauty of horror books through 2026 so it's a beautiful Be thing. beauty of horror now is up to four you know i lose track myself uh five i'm working on six now <laughs> <laughs> I remember and, and, when I remember when one came out. You know? <laughs> and there's a couple of holiday special books. Did also. I see that you're doing you're doing Chiller? Did I see that? Yeah, I'll be at Chiller. It's been we'll, a couple we'll, years. We'll, yeah, we'll come. The last time you did Chiller, I think, is when we did it, right? We yeah, did, yeah, yeah. We'll come. We'll me and Alago and, and some of the you know, story of Lou. We'll we'll come out and and and, and uh, show some support. And we love we love Chiller, man. You know. Yeah, it's a good time. It's a good thing and, and it's fun and, and and you connect with a lot of people too, you know. Absolutely, yeah. It's good. And I'll, I'll have the spoiler records on hand for that. Cool. And um, that's the chiller. Have, that's the chiller in October. That's like the pre-Halloween, which is their big one. Yeah, it's basically Halloween weekend. I think Halloween sure. falls on a Monday. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and I'll have. Uh, we made a Beauty of Horror action figure, uh, the Guliana character through NECA NECA Toys nice um and the eyes glow in the dark and everything will have that do you do you work like on, i mean I, I when you're out on the road even like in europe like you just were i mean do you find any time to do any of that sort of graph any sort of the graphic stuff or you just like i'm in the life of agony zone touring zone eating shitty sleeping shitty <laughs> and just trying to survive to play great shows do, do you find any is it possible to do any anything else or or, or or do you have to compartmentalize things i used to do it you know i used to do it to to hit certain comic book deadlines because they were really demanding but now sure. i've been uh really putting the time in at home to get it done before i have to go out on the I road see. yeah i do like to separate it now it makes sense it's a different mindset like i said i'm i'm at home you know zoning out to scorsese yeah. commentary and and that's yeah, how i like yeah, to yeah, draw yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, not in a, a dingy uh, backstage. Or, or not like in the lounge or the bus while everyone's sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ooh, and it's too yeah. much. It's too much. Yeah. And you're, you're like fighting for survival out there, you know? <laughs> like, Plus, shit. It, it's too hot, man. It's too hot to draw. Crazy. I know. It's still hot, man. We just <laughs> we were just out today. It's brutal. It's we were melting out there. Out there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, all right, great. You know, um, Thanks. Uh, let's get this up so people can see it. And I wish you all the best. I'm a fan of the band and super looking forward to, uh, you know, uh, uh, doing the event with you guys in December. So, uh, yeah, thanks for having us. Thanks for thinking of us too. Of course, man. Uh, of course. And, 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 uh, yeah, we're, we're good. Um, I'll talk to you in a bit. Let's get this thing up so people can see it. Right on. Cool. Thanks, man. All right. Hey, everybody out there. Thanks a lot for supporting the show. Um, if you're wondering about, uh, please, uh, join us on Patreon. Uh, we'd be a patron on Patreon. We do all kinds of cool shows like that. So, uh, we'll see you in a bit. Uh, until then do good things and good things will come to you.